guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks so much for clicking on today's video. So as you can tell by the title, we are doing a try on first impression of the Juvia's Place foundation and foundation sticks. I pre-ordered these from Cocoon Beauty um, and they're in. So I usually just do a regular sit down review, whether it be a first impressions or a review after I've used a foundation for a little bit. But I thought I would switch it up today and do a wear test specifically because the formulations of these Juvia Place I Am Magic line to me seems like they might be an oily girl's nightmare. The foundation has a thick consistency and so I was worried about that kind of slipping and sliding on my face and also you know um, foundation sticks are notorious because their cream products are not really working so well with skin so I wanted to try them out and see how they do during the day so that's going to be today's video uh, if you haven't already please make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, follow me over on Instagram if you haven't already as well and let's just get started all right so eyes are done so just going to go in straight to the base I have already applied my primer which is the Colourpop All Star Matte and Blur love that stuff so the website says, take a trip around the world with Juvia's Place and our brand new I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation formulas. From Sudan to Marisol, our 42 expertly formulated shades are globally inspired for long-lasting, all-day wearability. I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation was designed for all skin tones, from the deepest dark to the fairest fair. Live your magic with Juvia's Place. So the foundation looks like this. It comes in this beautiful coral work colorway. I really, really like this. Uh, and it's a squeezy tube, so it has a cap on the bottom with a squeeze and you get, how many mils is this? Standard 30 mils, one fluid ounce in this, so it's just a standard size foundation. I picked up, according to all the swatches that I watched online and reading the descriptions online, the shade Angola. So Angola is a shade 140 and it says on the website that it's for deep dark skin with warm olive undertones and I think that really accurately describes how I would also describe my team my um skin tone so deep dark with the olive golden undertones but this one says warm olive so we'll see if it leans a little bit orange or if it's going to be um right on right so after watching a lot of reviews and stuff online on this it's supposed to be quite a heavy thick foundation so i don't really know how this is going to apply and i don't know what's the best way to apply this for me so what i'm gonna do is start off with putting this on the back of my hand and then seeing which sponge I think will fit. So that's the color right there. It looks quite spot on. I don't know if it's gonna be a little bit too warm, but let's see once I blend it in. Um, I'm just gonna go in first of all with my L foundation blurring brush and it's dab that on to my face. It's quite a thick formulation, definitely, in terms of how it feels on the back of my hand. It's not liquidy at all. Um, and I've put on like a tiny amount, basically the same that you would get from like a regular foundation pump. That's what I've applied. Oh, and actually it's buffed out a lot better than I thought it would. I thought it would be more difficult to buff this out. Um, color wise I think it's looking okay it's definitely running a little bit more on a deeper side which isn't too problematic because then I can always brighten up the rest of my face it's always harder if you go in with a product that's a little bit too light because then you have to do so much to try and balance it back whereas if it's a bit deeper then I think you can lighten it up with your concealer and stuff but let's see how it dries down. I hope it won't dry down too much darker because then I'll just start looking like a completely different person. That's actually gone on really nicely. Um, I thought it would be thicker than that. It's almost, it's not quite moussey, but it's, it has some whipped kind of um, consistency to it. So it's not super, super like gloopy thick but it's not super moussey and airy. So it's somewhere along that line, which I guess is why they called it the velvety um, matte foundation because it's, yeah, it's kind of just does feel like that kind of way, like velvety if you were to describe a liquid product in that way. And it seems to have blended out really, really nicely. I'm just looking in my mirror here. The coverage is amazing considering the amount that I used. 
it has covered up most of my blemishes. <clears throat> There's a couple here on my cheeks that are really stubborn that ideally I probably should colour correct, but it's long. So I don't, unless I'm going for like a really special event or like I'm gonna be photographed or something. So I'm just gonna add a teeny tiny amount just to my cheeks. What do you guys think of the colour match? I think in terms of my face and my neck, it looks really even, but then when you look at my chest, it's starting to look like a different tone, but I guess we'll bring back some of that brightness with the concealer. Um, consistency on my face, it definitely does feel tacky and I am getting transfer, but I think because of the consistency of the foundation, that's to be expected. Typically the thicker the foundation is, it, it sits on your skin so it will transfer um easier or more easily but looks pretty good and um, it's giving me a nice not too flat look so it's not like matte in the way that's like super dried out it's giving me matte with a little bit of like not glow but natural kind of look to it as well so i'm enjoying that so i also picked up some shade sticks so they look like this part of the same i am magic range um <clears throat> I didn't really know what my shade was in the shade sticks, but I decided to go for two shades. So the first one is Benin or Benin. Can somebody tell me how to say that? I think I'm saying it wrong. Benin um, looks like that. It's a close shade actually to what my skin tone is. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see what that looks like in a moment. And then I also picked up, what shade is this? Tunisia, which is, is it that the darkest shade? Let me just double check. Yeah, Tunisia, it seems like the darkest shade on the website, if that's the right one. Although I can't see why that would be the darkest shade. I don't know. Anyway, it's the first one on the list, but it's Tunisia. Um, and it looks like that. Again, on the back of my hand, this kind of looks like it could be my skin tone. So I think I've kind of just picked up shades that kind of look like my skin. So we'll see how this looks like on. But in terms of the description on the website, it says full coverage, natural and radiant finish, multi-purpose foundation fix. It comes in 30 shades, so less shades than the foundation. Uh, formulated to feel like skin, a weightless multi-purpose formula that glides on seamlessly to cover imperfections while giving full definition to face. Um, so it has shea butter and oil controlling ingredients to aid in long wear while providing radiance. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to try these out. I'm particularly going to try out the shade Benin under my eyes and just see what that looks like in terms of a concealer. I hope it's bright enough to sit against this Tunisia shade. Um, and I'm just going to apply that directly onto my face. Um, kind of just like wherever I would usually apply these products. And then using, using a small kind of concealer brush, I am going to blend that in. Oh. Oh, girls, this looks good. Oh! This looks good. I'm getting all of the coverage I need and also it's just blending really nicely into the foundation. It's not struggling in terms of sitting with it. It's not fighting it. It's just kind of working really well with it. I love it when products do this from one brand and I guess they should, um, but it's not always like um, explicit or in inherent that that's gonna happen even though they're probably from like the same line, but obviously these have been formulated to work well together. I'm really, really enjoying that. Shade wise, I could probably even get away with wearing Benin on my face for like brighter days. Um, I don't know if it's looking, if you can see much difference on camera with that. I thought I had picked up a concealer for this, like the I Am Magic Concealer, but somehow I made a mistake in the car and I didn't. Um, let's see what this Tunisia shade is like and whether that can be used for anything. Nope. 
Tunisia is actually, ooh no. I thought I could use it for bronzing, but Tunisia is actually brighter than Benin, no, than Angola. Yeah, Tunisia is actually brighter than the foundation, so that can't be used in that way. I thought I'd be able to contour with it, but I can't. I've obviously picked up not the right shade. But I'm enjoying what this is looking like. Yes, doesn't my skin look really good? Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's set. So for setting powder, of course, I'm going in with my Laura Mercier powder. And going in with my AOA Studio Mochi, Mochi, Mochi sponge. I don't know how you say that. Um, it's available now, by the way, on Cocoon. So if you want it. Um, I'm going to set all over my face with this powder. And then I want to go in with a slightly brighter shade just under my eyes. And the shade I really like for this is the Makeup Revolution um, Baking Powder. And this is in the shade Terracotta. It's a warm orangey yellow, like which is really nice for my kind of skin tone. I think some of these banana powders that are out here are really actually difficult to wear if you're dark like me and you can get it wrong um, in the camera and in the flashback it can just start to look just wrong mate. So I'm going to use this. So I'm just putting a little bit into the cap and then I've got this ee, a tiny little um, beauty blender. It's a mini one also from AOA Studio um, and I'm just going to pick up some of this powder and use this to add a little bit of extra brightness under my eyes. Just because I think those two shades that I use, the foundation and the nin under my eyes, were actually quite close in colour. And also, and so when I'm done on the face, it can end up looking almost like the same thing. So I'm just going to use this just under my eyes so that we can get that extra lift of brightness that's all and i really like this shade because it warms up the face i feel like the other banana powders that are more yellow yellow end up looking cold whereas this has enough warmth in it to look lifted which i am enjoying really like this it's perfect like for being precise under the eyes and the point is super super sharp so you can be really really accurate get right into those corners like on the inner eye and stuff enjoy that great all right let me just dust off some of that excess if there is any i didn't put on much but you know you never know then i'm gonna bronze up my face real quick um you guys know with the CoverGirl bronzer. And then for blush using the Black Up um, single blush shade in the colour 10. Okay, so I'm in two minds about whether I should spray down my face or not. I think I have put on enough powder so where it is looking a little bit powdery. So I am going to do it, but I think I'm going to use my Max Fix Plus. I'm a little bit worried that if I spray on my Hangover um, RX that it will over dewify this face and it will start slipping and sliding. So I'm just going to use my Fix Plus. So finish up my face with some lip gloss and liner. Uh, the lip gloss that I'm using is Dose of Colors Stay Glossy Gloss in the shade Hot Cocoa. Love these glosses, you guys know. Look good. So the time now is 1.28 p.m. Um, I'm gonna head out. So I've got my full face on, I'm gonna head out. I will be back a little bit later on. It's not gonna be like a really, really long wear test because I just wanna go out, run some errands and then come back. But I will show you what my face is looking like after that. No touch-ups, no nothing allowed. It's just going to be my face. I will try and do a check-in as well while I'm out so we can see how it's doing after about maybe two hours or so. Uh, and then we can see what it's looking like right at the end. So see you in a bit. 
All right, check-in time. So it is now around 3.30. I am in um, changing rooms. They don't see Waikiki and trying on some jeans. Um, so it's been about two hours since I put this face on and my nose is a little bit oily but the rest of my face kind of still looks good. My nose is always my oiliest area so that was to be expected. This is what that's looking like. So not too bad. I'm um, sorry the lighting in here is crap. It's like fully overhead. <clears throat> but I hope you get an idea of what we're doing. It does feel like I have makeup on though so just bear that in mind. Um, but we'll see how we're doing a few hours later. All right guys, I am back. So the time now is 6.20 p.m. So I've had this makeup on for about five hours now. Absolutely no retouches. I have just reapplied lip gloss because I ate and everything and it was and as juicy as it was looking right now. But I haven't touched my face, haven't powdered, haven't blotted, nothing. So this is what it looks like after five hours wear. And if you're seeing what I'm seeing, then you are seeing that I am a glowing, but more than glowing. <laughs> so this is definitely, um, oils are starting to peek through, um, definitely around my nose area uh, here, and also around my forehead area. Not so much in other places on my face, but definitely in my T-zone, or eye zone as I call it. Um, it's starting to break up. So five hours is not too bad, but because I'm used to wearing lighter foundations in terms of texture, they don't tend to do this so fast. But you know, with a quick blot, not with that brush, that's my bronzer brush. Let me get another brush. Hmm. Brush, 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 okay. This one isn't quite the right brush, but with a quick blot, then you know face goes back to looking good looking like skin so if you don't mind then this is definitely um something that you could do just to like blot your makeup but i think also going in with the right base would have helped this foundation out a lot i just used my all star matte and blur primer which i tell you guys all the time is really good for the blurring but it doesn't have an extremely mattifying um, function so it doesn't suck all the moisture out of your face and I wanted to try that primer because it's a primer that I use every day and that way I'd be able to tell how it goes but alternatively you know use a mattifying primer so one like this one is a cheapy the Rimmel Stay Matte um, primer or if you want really heavy duty then the Becca what's this called Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector is amazing uh, this kind of almost works I feel like um, what's that stuff we all used to use milk of magnesia it really does like for your face but I don't like to use that every day anymore because I feel like it's over drying so something like this is a nice fairly decent matte but you know decide something else that I could do although this might add a little bit more to what the feeling is on my face is to go on in before I apply the foundation with a powder as well which would kind of just help lock things in or if, um, or alternatively go in with a mattifying setting spray. So I love the NYX matte setting spray and I love the skin, oh, Scandinavia matte oil control setting spray. So those are just some options for how to wear this. I think if you have normal to, normal to combination skin, which it doesn't lean too oily, then you will really, really like this foundation in terms of its staying power because I'm just looking on my face and I haven't got like blemishes or dark marks coming through. It hasn't started to actually break down and slip off. Although I haven't given it too much time to do that. Maybe if I was wearing this for eight hours or 10 hours and I would really start to see a difference. Um, but for now it looks good apart from the areas that I had to just touch up. So I would say definitely full coverage, definitely with the velvet matte texture. I mean more as soon as you put it on rather than how your face wears. Um, I will keep trying these out, of course I've bought them, and I do like um, the colours. I think I'll probably save the um, foundation for more like evening wear or when I really want like a, you know, a base, you know, I want to cake it on, that's when I'll probably wear this. Um, I'm going to try out the shade sticks and see which colour I prefer more for all over my face, but again, because they're cream products, I feel like I will have to 
set them in a particular way. Although when I'm looking under my eyes where I set, that hasn't broken down like the rest of my T-zone. So maybe these aren't as slippy, but I don't want to say anything before I've given them a go. Um, so I'll make sure to update you. So make sure that you follow me over on Instagram if you're not already, because I do little updates and little tidbits over there um, pretty regularly. So keep the lookout for that. Let me know your comments down below what you think about this foundation, colour match, how it wore during the day and will you be considering purchasing it. Uh, otherwise, I think we're done here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.